Good afternoon and uh, welcome to our webinar at four o'clock. We're going to wait uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, I know that we've got a few attendees joining us still. Um, so um, we will come back to you very shortly. Thank you. And good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, we're going to hopefully, and we do, we hopefully, uh, I was going to say, we hopefully see you, Liam, but you're, you're, you're there in the top right-hand corner. <laughs> thank you, Tag. Are you well? Very well, thank you. How are you? Yes, really good, really good, and, and good. really good to see you. Um, I know that we, we, um, we've got a few more people joining, but we're, we're going to make a start. Um, and I think um, we're going to be uh, talking about probably what is a, a very much a, a, a hot topic um, for us at the moment, which is, um, or for this sector really, which is around financing and, and you know, money's ever tighter. Uh, but in the first instance, Liam, it would be great if you could uh, give us a bit of an introduction about yourself and where you work. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Tag. Um, so my name is Liam Doyle. I work for Apple Financial Services. So we're Apple's own uh, vendor finance program. Um, I'm one of the sales managers and the lead for the education channel. So I work with uh, Tag and the rest of the team at Academia to talk with customers about how, how AFS can help them to fund their tech projects and, and how we can uh, make leasing a little bit different. That's my awesome. Point. Yeah. So AFS, just I know men mentioned, but Apple Financial Services. So um, we, we use AFS because it's much, much shorter. Um, I guess it's a bit like Tag and Tom Abel Green. So um, I am Tag, um, long surname. Uh, I'm the UK Education Solutions Manager for the Academia Group. Uh, my role is very much around um, strategic leadership and that morally and ethically, our proposition to our customers is um, in the best way supporting them, really. So um, we're going to talk finance, Liam, um, and I guess we'll move on. Uh, to the next slide, which uh, will be coming through. Um, and I think the agenda um, will will be loose, uh, uh, loosely based around what, what we're seeing on the screen. But I guess funding um, in the education system uh, and sector is still a really hot topic. And, and the reality is we know it's been uh, tough for many years. I think the importance around dispelling um, the myths around financing are important. Um, the great options that we know are available to customers to fund technology projects, and I think you know if we can help dispel some of the myths, then the funding options that are available suit lots of um, lots of people. And um, there's different mechanisms, um, and how we can look at you know funding shared devices uh, and one-to-one -one schemes. Um, and I guess a conversation that's happened in many of the webinars really is around changing the mindset 
um, around how we move forward. Um, and we've never been in a better place to change the way things are being done. The opportunity um, is a positive time to be changing, despite all of the negativity around, uh, obviously, COVID. Um, and I've just realized, um, rookie error, that the agenda um, order is not the way that the slides are going to appear. So go figure. Liam, are you there still? Taking everyone through the fine details of terms and conditions around a finance agreement, because nobody wants to hear that at this time of the afternoon. <laughs> Although rather sadly, I do know all of those clauses off my hand, but I won't admit that outside of this group. <laughs> so um, funding uh, funding is a really hot topic, right? It's I think more so than ever, um, we look at ways in which we can um, support school uh, or customer projects um, and they range everything from um, I guess classroom solutions through to mobile one-to-one um, -one learning solutions. Um, the reality is funding is weirdly um, still uh, really tough uh, for schools despite there being a big push from the DfE to move to mobile solutions. Um, I found a stat the other day, which was in, in sixth form, uh, funding since 2010 has, has gone down by 21%, um, and school funding has slumped to between 8 and 9% over um, the same period of, of time. Have you seen those conversations with, with education customers, um, with you, Liam, in the last, certainly in the last four to six weeks? Uh as you said earlier, Tag, I think there's never been a better time to talk about affordability and flexibility. You know, we're we're absolutely here to help customers to mobilise both their uh, students and their staff um, to get them the uh, equipment that they need, but also for that to be underpinned by an agreement that they're in control of and, and that Apple won't control of, essentially, because we've, we've reimagined leasing from the bottom up to, mm. to really make it work. Uh, I think, yeah, customers are looking for us to help them to design new flexible finance solutions and and also address this need now and and that's looking more like a longer term change of of distance learning and of course remote working as well so yeah very very topical yeah and i think i think the conversation actually in the last few weeks has moved moved even further uh, or or faster from how do we how do we fund things quickly now um, and make best use of the financing that we've got available, funds that we've got available to actually, um, we're looking ahead as, as far as maybe f September and October. And, I, and I, I've been talking to some universities who are already planning that students may not even be back in 2020 because of some of the um, implications of what might might happen if they do. But to be able to do that, they're having to certainly bring projects forward um, to be able to, um, kind of support that remote teaching and learning um, and I, I think historically uh, and we'll touch on this a bit later on is that um, devices in um, in the education space have probably lived longer than their shelf life um, and so what we see is that um, it, I guess what what we see is that devices become uh, I guess not not usable, or they become, uh, you know, they, they're not fit for purpose. Um, but actually, it also affects teachers, uh, which is which is really important. What um, what are you seeing in terms of leasing requirements at the moment? Specifically, are you seeing anything outside of hardware? So the traditional mobile technology. Yeah. So so. Yeah, so the services behind it that, of course, you know, academia and, and, and partners are able to provide, that's incredibly important. And, and software as well. We're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of software uh, licenses and packages that help help both students and staff to to do their courses. You know, mm. we, we can wrap that all into our agreements alongside any accessories. Uh, I think what you know, the, you mentioned it earlier that people need to get devices out there to people really quickly and and that's what we're able to help them to do mm. and, and why why not underpin that with a really attractive option on finance and, and giving that full control to to customers and i think and we'll touch on it later on um but when we go when we look at the the funding element is um one of the things that we we've, we've certainly seen a rise in is that the, the requirement to spend funding 
um, on faculty requirements or, 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 or building requirements maybe actually uh, is going to change that landscape because actually there's not so much of a need to have that, that funding in place for that. And actually where we've seen staff cuts um, historically uh, take a priority sadly over um, the purchasing of other elements that are required in, in a schooling environment or, or you know further education environment or whatever is actually that we're going to be able to empower schools uh, colleges and universities to be able to use the funding more wisely which means that in terms of staff cuts actually that might not be a solution they need to go down um, but it also gives them the flexibility around um, the types of employment so one of the things that we were talking about the other day on a webinar um, where um, I was talking to James, who's our technical director. In fact, as a business now, I think one of the probably only barriers that we see from an employment perspective with an individual would actually be really a time zone element because the ability for us to be able to work as a business remotely is, is in place and um, we, can, we can empower uh, our, our employees, but also the support that we're able to give to our, our, our customers, right? I think, I think we're seeing that across, across the board. Yeah, and same here, Tag, absolutely. You know, the customers we're talking to and the business that I work in, where, you know, we, we've had to do a lot to mobilize our employees and we, we want to make sure that they've got the access to only the very best that will enable them to to do their jobs as, as most efficiently as possible. And, and of course, that, that extends to distance learning. Yeah, so so going back to, 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 that, to that comment about having the very best, um, it's interesting, you know, 1.1 million computers in the education space at the moment are classed as ineffective, which I touched on earlier. Um, it, an average of that is in every primary school, that's 24 devices. And in the secondary school, that's about 126 um, devices. Um, now, the reality is, is we live in a world where um, we live, I guess it's instant gratification. Um, and we, we probably, as, as, as a human race, on a consumer level, um, we actually um, subscribe to um, some sort of program, right? So um, I, um, you know, people lease a car, um, and that's quite a common thing these days. Um, in my household, we subscribe to Netflix, uh, and I think you do too, Liam. Um, I do. But if, if Netflix goes down, and my 17 year old daughter is pretty quick at, uh, asking why that might be the case um, and likewise with Amazon um, you know the shopping facility and having a, a same day um, or next day delivery um, is is also um, probably a deciding factor for how we use uh, how we shop because if we don't if we can't get something the next day I know it sounds like a first world problem right but if if we if we can't get something the next day we might not even purchase it which is great in some ways but actually we've become dependent on having that immediate service. Um, and then uh, as a family, we also subscribe to a toothbrush um, service. I know it sounds really weird, right? But just for the record, you cannot, uh, the traditional or the normal plastic toothbrushes, you, you, can't, um, you can't recycle those. So as a business, we have um, the ability to, uh, sorry, as a, as, a, as, a, as a home, we have the ability to subscribe to this service and we get it delivered. I know that you can subscribe to haircuts. Um, there's lots of weird things that we do. Now, if any of those stop working, we sort it out. In, in the education space, if 1.1 million computers, a third of computers are classed as ineffective, why do we not try and do something about that it's a bamboo <laughs> toothbrush there you go <laughs> i will be looking into that <laughs> um, it, yeah i mean in the education technology market we're we're certainly seeing that move away from that ownership model so where people have previously and customers have always put purchases capex um capital expenditure that they're now looking towards a different model and let's talk about a subscription tool um or a lease plan model yeah, uh, I just want to make sure you can still hear me as well. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, no problem. That's perfect. Yeah, and, and education technology is exactly exactly the same. Customers are are realizing actually there's some real power behind a opex model, a leasing option, giving them that full control as to when they want the devices, how long do they want them to be used for, uh, and that stops technology obsolescence because you know the years can pass and that technology comes out of date very very quickly. So. It's yeah, a, it's a it's a change that we are seeing each and every day. 
Yeah, and uh, what I going back to those those methods that you talked about, Liam. One of the um, one of the things that we we often have conversations with our customers around is is that actually there are various models um, the, uh, of funding that are available. Um, so obviously we've moved on to the to the slide where we can talk around the leasing options are there, which is obviously the reason we've got you here, Liam, is your expertise. Um, but maybe um, kind of maybe just talk around some of the leasing options that are available. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what Apple have done this, I mentioned it earlier, is we have reimagined leasing um, and financing and we're, we're doing it the Apple way, as as what anybody would expect. A very Think clear, different. Right? Very, <laughs> very, uh, different and very transparent. We, we want to we want to break the mold and, and be disruptors in this market. And it's a very well established industry. Apple Financial Services is is mainly underpinned by what's unique about Apple, which is the future value of their devices and their equipment, also known as the residual value, much, much higher than other manufacturers. And actually, that enables us to put some really compelling financial structures um, available to our customers. We're also not here to make money from the finance. I, I often say to customers that although Apple have the net worth to be a bank, that they're not. Um, their, their interest is to make sure that their customers and, and students and staff only have the very best and latest devices from Apple. And Apple Financial Services is the perfect, perfect route to achieving that. So, so we have we have fair market value options. So that's leveraging that residual value upfront to provide a significant discount um, in the rentals um, over the period of the lease, yeah. which could be in anywhere between one year and four years. Um, and we also have a, a single upfront payment model, also known as a bullet lease. It, it's not that exciting, but it, it's a single payment right at the beginning, um, and that really helps to offset an even better discount against the rentals because any risk is mitigated. So we, we're we trying to weave the story around AFS into Apple and Apple in education and really move it away from, from the word leasing towards a, a device lifecycle strategy and, and a managed refresh option. We've also got some, on the back of, of the COVID-19 health crisis, our customers approached us with, with a need to have real flexibility around short-term financing. Uh, and we've implemented some, some options there uh, that allow customers to walk away from an agreement, say after six or 12 months, without any penalty. You simply hand back those devices. If, if, your, um, if your landscape, your organization looks different, you, you don't have as many students as you anticipated, those devices can simply be handed back or continue uh, through the full term of the agreement with some really preferential options. So that's just some of the things we've got. I mean, we've got, I won't talk to you about them all because we'll be here till midnight, but we've got a million, million different options. And, and, and that's really our message around AFS is it's really flexible. We love the opportunity to talk to customers around what, what's happening in your organization and how can we help you to achieve it. Um, and we'll use some of our many, many options to pull together a bespoke and compelling financial structure for you. And I, and I think it's fair to say um, a, a, a couple of things is we'll show um, just later on in the in the conversation just kind of what a document looks like so can people can actually understand kind of what you've been saying and where the savings can be made and, and how it works. Um, it'd be interesting actually, um, I'm going to launch a poll um, which is um, just asking um, our listeners really about um, whether people are currently using um, leasing to fund their projects. Um, so hopefully people... Um, we'll be able to see that um, now. Um, and so I guess take your pick, right? It's it's very simple. Um, yes, we do use leasing. And um, the answer could be no, we, we don't use leasing. Um, or it might be um, that actually we use it to lease certain products, but not technology. Um, I'm hoping people can see the poll. So it'd be great to get some feedback on that. Um, in the meantime, whilst that's going on, um, what I would uh, also ask is, um, I guess, from a, a, a business perspective, have you seen, um, Liam, uh, a massive increase only because of COVID in terms of leasing? Or have you seen it, I've you know seen it build over the last sort of two years, 18 months, maybe? 
Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, we've seen an increasing level of interest in, in a different financial model. Um, but that I think what so you, you mentioned it earlier, Tag, that customers are looking to possibly bring forward their procurement projects, given that they we're not sure when maybe the students will be able to return um, to the premises. So, you know, is there the need now to get devices out to students wherever they are so they can continue their academic journey? And, and I would say yes. But yeah, this has been a a trend away from that ownership towards that OPEX model uh, over the last couple of years. And, and you know, Apple Financial Services have, have continued to see and support ever more customers, colleges, multi-academy trusts, schools, mm -hmm. private schools, universities with, with, with quite significant spends and projects. And we've been able to, to help them to, to utilize Apple's guaranteed residual values to, to really pull together some, uh, you know, great pricing and and an attractive option. Yeah, and and I think you mentioned also there that you know that there's there's various types of of establishments. So we talked about you know the public schools, uh, or I say private independent schools. Um, you've got your state based schools, and and actually what should be really um, made clear is that there are different funding models available to each of those elements uh, to each of those businesses, right? So, um, a traditional um state governed school only has access um to an operating lease uh, that's that's right yeah that's right yeah without the um secretary of state approval which i think we can all agree would, would never happen so um, <laughs> that'll be a very painful process um, an operating lease is, is an underpinned by a residual value and, and yeah. the school won't be the eventual owner of the asset at the end okay um, we, we, most of that we have so we have options for that but we also have other, other options um, such as higher purchase agreements that, that allow the ability for guaranteed ownership, but enables the cost um, of acquisition to be spread over time. Yeah. So that that's available to other institutions. And I think I think the other thing that we've certainly seen a rise in actually um, around some of the, the school um, that are asking us around the funding models is actually what they're seeing is the ability to use some of the funding they get for um, bursary bursary funded students or. Um, pupil premium funding as well is being looked at in a slightly different way. Um, traditionally, what they've done is probably taken it from from those areas to use uh, to cover salaries, which has not been great, or to, to cover other areas. Um, I think what what is a really clear conversation from our point of view, and what I know we'll talk about this in, in when we talk about the dispelling the, the myths, is from a, a sustainability point of view. Um, if you are able to plan sort of two, three, four years in advance, knowing that your lease schedule will cover pretty much everything you need from a, an IT technology perspective, it allows that freedom to then look at the budgets in other areas when knowing that there's not going to be hopefully any hidden agendas. Um, and, and when we talk about um, one of the answers, somebody said that um, they, um, they do lease for non-technology stuff. Actually, we've seen the ability for institutions to fund the infrastructure elements that are required as part of an ongoing program. Um, and, and so again, um, it's, it's moving away from what people think the traditional lease should be used for, right? Um, and I guess um, from that perspective, it just means that, that planning is, is, is essential and, and, and we talk about that quite a lot. Um, yeah. In, in terms of myths, leases are really bad, I heard. I've heard this as well. Um, and I think in the past, uh, well, I've heard this little rumour, I think in the past um, that, that has been the case in some cases, and we don't shy away from that. You know, that, that actually there, you know, many customers have entered into agreements in the past, maybe photocopiers, for example, uh, I would have found nasty surprises at the end because because actually those those finance companies are, of course, there to make money out of their finance. And and sometimes what you can see is is that customers are encouraged to what we call sweat the assets or, or continue usage of that lease for 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 many months, if not years after the you know sort of scheduled end date. Um, there's hidden fees, complex terms, you know. So, so yes, there there is a there is sometimes some nervousness around leasing, and, and that's why AFS have have redesigned leasing. We've really put or removed all of those horrible terms and conditions that exist. It's a very very clean contract that that is very much in the customer's favour, uh, and that's because this new era today is around helping customers to refresh to new devices. Don't don't sit on your old 
uh, equipment because what we'll do is we'll remarket those devices if they're hand back to, handed back to us. We talked about sustainability a minute ago. That's a huge, huge piece for us, being able to remarket in another market, sometimes overseas, and give those devices a second life. Yeah. And many customers are interested in that because it helps them, them to to tick those corporate social responsibility and, and sustainable and responsible technology usage policies. Sorry, it was a lot of yeah, but no, but 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 and that's really you know obviously the sarcasm around leasing is, leasing is bad, but I think you know going back to the fact that we talked around you know the the, the quantity of devices that are classed as ineffective, um, I think the reality is 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 why are they ineffective is as you've absolutely you know hit the nail on the head is they get sweated out those devices because with all with all good intentions uh, you know traditionally you uh, an establishment will buy their devices and say in three years time. We're going to sell those devices off um, and we're going to buy some new ones. Uh, but what happens is, is in those three years, things happen that, that are um, beyond control, which mean that when the devices come up for that refresh at three year, the, the three year point, they actually say, well, we'll make them last another two years. And then at, at the end of the five year period, you probably see them go in for another two years. And I've been into so many customer meetings where, when we talk about the current legacy devices that they have and they go, oh, yeah, they're kind of, we, we've replaced the batteries quite a few times. Um, we've done, we've done this or that or whatever it might be. Um, and they're 10 years old and, you know, they're, they're not running the latest software. Um, so, you know, they're using um, what isn't essentially industry standard or sector standard software. They're using, um, you know, old operating systems that, that are the cause of the batteries not working and the devices um, not turning on um, and you know how many times have we heard oh we, we have an IT lesson and it takes 20 minutes for the computers to boot up um, and and by that time the lesson's kind of over and I think I think when we look at the pain points um, around uh, maybe the financing options is that some of those concerns stem from other problems that the, that the institution has faced so it's not directly because of leasing um, but but there is a fear that they're going to invest in something and then they're going to be hit with other issues. So it might not be the same issues as they've had, but new issues. Awkward silence. What do you think, what do you think Liam? No, I, I, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, those those bad experiences that customers have had, and really when, when, when a lease does go bad is, is at the end. And that's why, you know, we, we've re-engineered it to, to, to make it work. Um, we we don't have customers sitting in the secondary rental period. We'll we'll be talking to them well in advance, usually around six months, um, to ascertain what what are their plans for refresh. And and our messaging is always really clear. You you as the customer are in control of your plan and an agreement. Let us know. We, you know, there's these wonderful new Apple products that are available today. Would you like to to speed up your your upgrade process? You know, actually these devices are worth more than they would be if you leave it for six months. Let let's help. Let's help to to manage that refresh cycle. Yeah. Uh, the, the other point here, you know, that we see is very complex documentation. So customers, I, I've like you, Tag, I've been into many customer meetings where they, they've, you know, explained the experiences they've had. They show they've showed us that the equipment that they are still using, and you know, it it, it it's what we're trying to disrupt, and, and I think we're doing a good job. Um, the, with us, what what. There's really, really, I keep talking about the word flexibility and, and sorry to harp on about it, but but it is there and it's there for a reason. You know, at, at the end of our agreements, you, you've got every option available. So you can simply return that equipment and, and end the agreement that there's no need to continue. You can return and, and look to refresh. So take let's work, get rid of your old equipment. Let's look at new devices under a new AFS agreement. Or you can continue going for a short period on, on just a 30 day rolling notice period. If you need additional time, we all know that sometimes project time cells slip and, and un, yeah. unforeseen issues uh, you know, yeah. derail or, or delay our projects. Um, and you can even take ownership of, of the devices of some or all of the devices, if need be, by paying the fair market value. Uh, and that's the value that the device is anticipated to be worth at the time um, at the end and, and our asset management teams can can provide that information the other thing we can do is is the white glove services that so we work with academia and uh, to help you with the logistics and the handling how, how do we 
how do you return these devices? You know, that, that could be quite a logistical challenge and, and we're on hand to help you through that. Um, yeah, by making, like I said, straightforward and clear, yeah. simple agreements. And I think I think the other thing to add is is that just because you may have a lease that's going on for sort of three, four years, is that if you're in year two of a project and you need to, you know, um, get, a, get a secondary lease, that is possible, isn't it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's... Um, our, our agreements are set up by way of a master rental agreement and schedule. So it's really, really easy to add additional equipment. Everything is electronically signed, helping to speed it up. And that means that you know, we're not looking for the initial commitment that you can order by department, say, or by yeah. class sets. Um, it makes it really easy. And those agreements can either run for their own full period. So say two or three years, or they can it's not a very sexy word, but it's called co coterminous agreement. Yeah. And that essentially runs alongside the master so that everything comes to an end at the same time. And we can do everything in between. <laughs> so yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. Lot of and that's and that's the important bit actually, um, is 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 that um it is the bits in between that, that matter. I, I remember working with a, a head teacher in Essex um who I'd worked with uh, across several schools he'd been in, but he did he did end up in a in a in a in a school where um, they they absolutely needed to um, to I guess to refresh their IT equipment, their infrastructure, and so on, and move to the cloud. And um, he came to me and said, "Look, I've got um, between one hundred and one hundred fifty thousand pounds that I can spend over the next sort of five years." Um, and and let's let's put something together. I went in two weeks later, and he said, "Well, I've got an issue." And I kind of said, "Well, you you probably got eighty grand, right?" And he said, "No, I'm ninety grand in deficit, and I've got to get I've got to let go of seven teachers." Um, and um, he he'd gone into the school, you know, only been there a very short time, and things had, had come about. And actually, what he was able to do was to continue. He knew he needed to continue with the the the, the refreshing of the technology. And we set out a plan that over three or four years, he would have a lease every year that would allow him to target the key elements of, his, of what he was trying to refresh, and knowing that eventually he would break even and be back to where he needed to. But the reason he did the leasing was because he was able to structure um, and know, understand and, and plan um, the budgets accordingly, knowing that he could he could get to that point and get that measurement of success that he was looking for. Um, so it, it is it is knowing about, as you've rightly said, what happens at the end of that agreement. Um, you know, for all intentions, maybe at the end of three years, you want to stop and refresh, but actually that that comes up and you do go an extra year because you, you can. Um, we work six months ahead of, of, of schedule, don't we, in terms of what that end of life um, journey yeah. might look like for a customer. Um, so that we, there's plenty of time to plan. Um, and and um, it's just about knowing what's available to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a really interesting point about the budgets as well, um, Tab, because we the other thing that we can do is, is match the repayments with the budget cycle. So if, if there needs to be um, have a device now but not pay for it for three months and or until the start of the academic year possibly around fee um, income yeah. then we we can incorporate all of that you know we were that's that that matching budget is incredibly important yeah. and yes you can spread it out over a number of years or different lease agreements yeah yeah so and that, that's really it's really important and um, i know it's going to be quite hard on the screen uh, at the moment to see the master rental agreement but i thought we just we would just kind of showcase what this looks like you won't be able to read the small print but that's okay i'll tell everybody all the yeah. clauses yeah <laughs> please do yeah we won't do that um, <laughs> Our point here, we have reimagined the lease contract. So this is our master rental contract, which is just a, a three page contract um, with, with terms and conditions really geared um, to the favour of our customers. Like like we said earlier, it's, it's all electronically signed. So it's very easy, very secure, helps to speed up the process. And our end of term and return conditions are, are, are really greatly improved. Um, really, again, it's it's to show that that everything is very, very transparent and clear and straightforward, exactly as you would expect from working with with academia and with Apple. Great. Um, I think I think the next document actually, um, which we're going to um, just show, is um, kind of what where savings might be. 
Um, so we we we've done some rough numbers, um, and and so don't don't look at these numbers and think they're gospel. But we just wanted to kind of give you an, an idea of, of what you would see from our perspective if we were to send over a, a lease quote for you. Um, so we've taken a seventh gen iPad, right? Um, we, we've given it a unit cost of. Uh, if you were going to buy it, X fat, it's it's two hundred and fifty eight pound, I think, here, Liam. But yeah, talk talk to us about some of the important numbers in this document. Yeah, so it does look uh, like there's quite a few numbers on there. So I'll, I'll just explain the format of the quote. And again, that's around us being really transparent. We quote everything on, on a line. Mm. It looks like Liam has lost sound. I can hear you. I can hear you now. Sorry, Liam, we lost you temporarily. I think. No problem. I'll I'll, I'll go, go again. Go, go back to. There's some lots of numbers. <laughs> yeah. So quite a lot of numbers here, um, but but again, our, our quotes are very transparent, and and we do provide line by line quotations, so you can see exactly what you're paying for. Uh, and on the left hand side is is the cash price. This is what you would pay if it was capex for the iPad. It's two hundred and fifty eight pounds in, in this scenario. Uh, over on the right hand side, so this is based on a three year lease. There's monthly payments of just six pound forty seven for that iPad. Um, saving you 10% of the cost over the course of the lease. Or you can pay the single upfront payment, which is just 22312, saving yourself 14% um, off the cost of the device. And that's still on a three year plan. We, we can also wrap in. in this scenario with our lease uh, and like i said earlier all, all of apple's devices ipad macs and even iphones um have have a apple guaranteed residual value so there is a saving available versus the cash okay um so when when we go i mean just from my perspective you know if you go into um a leadership meeting and you say well you know an ipad's going to cost you 258 pound you know you start suddenly looking at that and saying well if i need to buy 30 of those or 50 of those that number gets quite scary but when you look at it from a a monthly perspective you know six pound 47 yeah okay so you, your number's still the same times 30 times 50 whatever but it's very clear to know how you can maybe look at the planning and the other bits that you need for that project and get to that number because I think well one of the things that we've done on here is you've added, for example, if somebody wanted to have a ruggedized case for an extra sixty three p a month, you can protect your iPad in a really suitable insurance approved case, right? Or for an extra, I'm just looking two pound nineteen, you've got um, you've got the Apple Pencil as well. So it's it's really clearly laid out, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's really, really, really clear. And, and you know, many customers, they want to wrap in their accessories, but some customers just want to lease the devices and maximize the saving available for the guaranteed residual value. And that's also fine because, yeah, yeah this 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 has to work for you. And that's our that's our underlying message. Um, and I think I think, the, you know, the, the response to all of that is is for our customers is, that, you know, even if you've traditionally always done caps, capex spending or capital spend purchasing, there is no obligation to getting a lease quote to understand what it might look like if they wanted to go down that road. Um, the I guess the, the next slide is really about kind of the academia offering. So I think the reality is, is what we know is that, you know, if if customers are um, cap capital spending that's fine we have the subscription models open and so we talk you'll see here in, in below the uh, the piggy bank that we've got um, an all-inclusive bundle for, per, for a student for example at nine pounds seventy and I think you know what we've included in this bundle is very much all of the things that we know would be necessary so um, you know we, we're talking about the, the management device license cost we're talking around the storage solution if you're going to have a storage solution um, talking around uh, the, the the funded support that's around professional development for staff or, or, or the whole package 
Um, and and what it means is is you can you can get a clear idea of shared you know shared devices what that might look like versus a one to one scheme. Um, the other model that we we talk about um, and certainly from an academia perspective is is the contribution model. Now traditionally, um, the route has been for schools to or education customers to go down a um, an operating lease and then um, kind of work a scheme where there is a voluntary contribution uh, from parents. So, uh, you know, years ago, sort of five, six years ago, you know, you could probably go down the route of probably 15, 16 pound from a parent and they would sign up to a scheme. The financial liability sits with um, the, um, the education establishment. And I, as a parent, I would voluntary contribute. The key thing to that is that I have the voluntary option to not contribute, right? And the the, the 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 scary thing there is that the liability still sits with the institution. And I've worked with with many customers who, over the period of a year, you know, where they've had a cohort where they've bought you know three four hundred devices, maybe twenty five thirty five parents at some point throughout that year group have chosen to stop paying, and. Whilst you can build an, an idea of that into the budget, what if all 300 or 400 people decided that they didn't want to contribute? You would have a real issue. So Academia um, started our Connected Schemes, um, which is a portal system where we um, have the ability to offer device bundles but working with the institution to their students. And there is a an outright purchase available at discount, so the education discount, or they have the ability to apply for consumer credit, which is different from the um, offering from Apple Financial Services. Um, and it's really a personal choice. We've seen a huge amount of success. We're probably one of the only um, channel partners in education that offer this sort of system. Um, and what we're saying to um, our customers is there is absolutely the opportunity for you to do an operating lease um, as long as you understand the, le the legal requirements from for your perspective. Or there are um, contribution models where you can still go down the operating lease and you can take a contribution scheme or there is a direct contribution scheme. And it's ultimately a, not a one size fits all. It's about knowing what's available to you. And then lastly, we talk around um, the, the rental option. So we've probably seen in the last six weeks a massive influx for schools looking to buy secondhand equipment um, and because they don't want to enter into a lease option. And you talked about your um, short-term short options available, um, Liam. Um, you know, there are yeah. some rental models available where we um, we can also support that, and I think what we would say is is if that is the case, you know, do reach out to us. We're, we're there to support. Um, my role is very much there to support what we do um, in terms of giving you all the information that you need as a customer to make an informed decision. Um, sorry, Liam, go on. Yeah, I was just going to say um, it's it's a really interesting point about the secondhand devices because one of the other things that we can help you with it is that there will be a value in the estate of technology that you have today, and actually we can help you to realise that value um, on a trade in basis to help yeah. fund the acquisition of of new devices, um, and that can work really really well um, to help offset those but those costs. And we'd be happy to talk to you to provide yeah sort of indicative. Um, buyback pricing and, and what we believe that estate to be worth yeah absolutely um and i think that's something that we'll touch on uh, in a little while as well um the other thing that we wanted to just kind of be clear i know this is very black and white very simply laid out in in a few steps but it, it is pretty simple um the, the the timeline of of how a quote would work essentially you know we we talk about the customer um having that conversation with academia uh, and with us understanding what your requirements are building that quote in step two. Um, we would then send it to you as a customer. Um, it is a capital spend quote. You say, okay, the, the, now we'd like to get um, a, a leasing option. Um, we then obviously involve um, Apple Financial Services. So Liam would come into that conversation. Um, we're very transparent. We, we loop everyone into the email. Um, and AFS um, creates essentially the document that you saw um, in the previous two slides, um, which outlines the numbers based on the official quote that you've received from us again at this point there's no commitment to to to, to go down that road is there liam that's right it's just yeah. None at all. numbers yeah i think they do the, their own talking really and then once the documents get signed as liam suggested um digitally we live in that world of digital 
Um, we then get essentially the authorization from Apple Financial Services to say, yep, yeah, go ahead. We've got everything we need. You can now supply that, that, that service um, and equipment to the customer. And we've put that refresh and go um, as a go again is, is really because the idea is, is you'll be able to do that refresh um, and you can continue having your latest devices um, available to you. Um, I, I haven't missed any steps, Liam, have I? No, you haven't. The only the only thing to say is, you know, you're of course in in control of when of when that agreement begins. So, well, the, the the final documents to be signed is just to confirm that you've had everything and you're happy to go. So, yeah, yeah it's you know, it's very like like Tag said, it's very very transparent, and we really do hope that 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 easy and simple model will help um, us to refresh and go again. So, I'll be using that. Just just a quick question. Um, let's say. I, as a customer, I got the delivery of that huge amount of IT that I needed and then realized I needed another six devices. Can I ring you up, Liam, and just add that? Or what's 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 yeah, the Yeah, so so if it's if it's when before the agreement's already the new one's begun, we'll we'll just add it into the leaks. Um yeah. and, and get, we'll have to get the documents re signed, but that's quite that's quite easy that's to quite do. Easy. Yeah. Um if if it's slightly afterwards, say a month down the line, you realise you, you need another six um, devices. That's why we have the the schedule to the master rental agreement to okay. help you to add on additional um, equipment. And and like we said earlier, that can either run for its full term or or, or a coterminous lease. Great, thanks. Um, thanks for that. Um, conscious of of time, um, we talk about mindset quite a lot, and and you know moving from. Um, a traditional way of teaching to a remote way, uh, remote teaching and learning is, 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 you know, involves a change of mindset. But actually, the mindset around financing is a great route to creating what we call successful sustainability. Um, you talked about the, um, the purchasing of old kit. Um, as Academia, we own a recycling business. So we, we last year in, in the K-12 market specifically, we gave back in excess of £180,000 um, back to schools based on buying old recycled kit and giving that funding back, which they then put into looking at leasing options and funding those projects that way. Um, but talking about the expansion of technology, uh, are you talking about scaling up, Liam? Is that what you're you're thinking? Yeah, absolutely. To to help mobilise and, and to scale, yeah, to scale up and and increase the yeah the amount of coverage and 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 technology estate that you have. Yeah, yeah, completely. And, and what the about sustainable angle? I think is in, is incredibly important at the moment. You know, people are are really keen to make sure that any technology is used responsibly, and and if that technology can have a second life, you know, I really I really think that that helps us all to to justify why we you know might look at a procurement exercise over a refresh. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting actually. To we've just launched a poll. Hopefully, you can see it. Um, it's about whether you consider leasing or contribution models as a method of funding your technology projects. Um, I've been a bit blasé with the old answers there. So, yep, count me in. Um, <laughs> nope, it's still never going to happen. It'd be interesting to know why that might be, actually, why people might not want to do something. Um, but also, if you're interested and you want to find out a bit more, we'd be really uh, keen to support that conversation. Um, and I guess that leads us on nicely um, to... Um, the Q&A um, that we um, have. So there's there's a live Q&A. Feel free to ask us the question in the chat feature, uh, which should be there in front of you, um, because we feel that, um, you know, certainly as somebody said, yes, count me in 100%. Look at that. That's amazing. Um, but if you have got... That was question, me. That was me. That it would be it would be great if there are any questions actually that we might be able to answer um ask away now and again you know if it's something that you want to do privately we'll probably stay on for a few few minutes at the end to do that um liam is there anything else in your mind that we we might need to just uh, make sure we've covered I, I look i think we've i think we've covered everything i think really what you know to, to say it again we, we love the opportunity to talk to customers to to find out what's going on in your in your school in your institution um you know and, and there's no commitment there we you know, we'll, we'll help to pull together some really good solutions once we understand what it is you're looking to achieve and what the challenges are yeah. um that, that's the only thing i'd say and, and yeah we're, we're very happy to have any calls or webexes we'd love to have a face-to-face -face meeting but of course that uh, might not be happening for a while um so yeah we, we've certainly 
we're available resource to to help you to explore this option yeah and i think i think one of the things i'd like to, to add finally also is that um as a um as a business um academia is is hugely invested in in the work that we do with apple but actually um you know we are um we're multi-platform and, and we're open to lots of conversations but what we do have um, in terms of the support around talking finances is that we, we run a planning essentials workshop um, that is based around looking at the key elements, uh, including vision and strategy, which talks quite a lot around looking at a sustainable finance model that is going to suit you as an institution. We deliver that face to face. Normally, it's a two and a half hour, three hour workshop. We are now able to deliver that. Um, online vir virtually so um, through um, the use of um, video conferencing um, and we've done a few over the COVID period and it's been hugely successful and I think more than ever the ability to, to, to attach that support um, as part of a decision making process has been really powerful for our customers um, and we can absolutely involve um, Liam and the team at AFS um, around um, around those conversations so that you you've got the answers that you need because i'll be very honest with you there are times where i've been asked a question and i have no clue what um, i'm being asked um and the best thing i do is just go here's liam he is the the font of all knowledge so um you know feel yeah. feel free to, to share that um, absolutely and in return if um, so our customers often ask me about um, maybe a technical question about the device and i have no clue so i <laughs> in turn chuck that back to tag and between us we make it work that's right I'd also just like to thank you tag for your for your lovely animoji because it, i think it's knocked at least 10 years off me so um, yeah oh, this one that. yeah well you know what, so <laughs> um do you know that's the other thing i've seen a massive in, in rise in covid is the use of um bitmoji animojis um I, I love them um and they're really actually mine really looks like me as well which is quite handy um so um a, a huge thank you liam for, for your time thank you. um it's been a pleasure and i know that we'll, we'll probably get some follow-ups that, that we'll, we'll, we'll we'll talk to you about and um obviously again what we'll do is we will um leave um the microphones and videos off now but we are available um for any q a that you want to do through the chat and with that, what I will do is um, give you a wave goodbye. Um, I will um, essentially play the outro video. Um, I have to say there's been not many technical issues today, which has been great. Um, and Liam, a genuine thank you again. And thank goodbye you. from us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. Uh, we will now be ending the webinar and uh, hopefully speak to you all soon. <laughs>